a glory be to the Almighty God as we gather together again at this platform to consider foundational tools. Uh, we have looked at the first to the third of the series and we are going to consider the number four, which is the concept of maturity for marriage. And this is very, very important. And I will want you to pay uh, rapt attention to the discussion on the concept of maturity for marriage. And we have uh, part one, part two, part three, and uh, if possible, almost part four or five. I pray the Lord is going to bless you as you listen attentively and apply the message thereof in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, we give you all the praise. And we thank you because you are the maker of marriage. And Lord, you can make marriage for anybody. You are the one that made it for Adam. And I know you can make it for anybody. And make it sweet, heavy, and um, powerful marriage that will become a model. I pray that as your people listen to this word, you will minister to their lives. And you will help them in the way to marriage in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Again, we are looking at the concept of maturity for marriage. And uh, to jumpstart our discussion, I want to go through three scriptures in order to open our discussion on this maturity because it's one of the foundational tools in preparation for heavy marriage. The first scripture will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 20. And I read from Amplified Bible that says, Brothers and sisters, do not be children, immature, childlike in your thinking. Be infants in matters of evil, completely innocent and inexperienced, but in your mind be mature adults hallelujah now in important matter or matters the bible is saying that we should not be immature or childlike but in evil in things of the world the bible is saying we should be inexperienced we should be infants we should be childlike in those matters and the uh, when it comes to important matters of life, like marriage, immaturity is not permitted at all because it will not give a good marriage. And again, we can look at First um, Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse number 11. I am reading from New Living Translation. It says, When I was a child, I spoke and taught and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Wow. When I was a child, I spoke, I taught, I reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. So in this scripture, the Bible is telling us there are childish things. When you want to go into marriage, childish things are not permitted. You must put them away. Childish thinking, childish way of speaking, childish, childish way of reasoning, all this must be put away so that you can enter into real life. And that is why I say that when I grew up, everyone who is speculating marriage must grow up. So I want to tell you, if you really want a healthy marriage, a good marriage, I want to tell you, grow up, grow up. And that is what the scripture commands. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. I read from English Standard Version. It says, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and by the waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine but by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, 
into Christ. Now, in this scripture, the Bible says, In maturity, we make you to be tossed to and fro. We make you to be carried away by every advice, every you know, information, everything that goes around in the world is going to carry you away. So, the scripture enjoins maturity so that you will not be carried away by every bit of advice and the happiness around you know, the marriage. So, these three scriptures are fun, you know, fundamental for you to understand that maturity cannot be compromised. So, I want to start with this frank truth. Marriage requires maturity and immaturity in marriage is the reason many marriages fail. Take note of that. Marriage requires maturity and immaturity is the root cause of the failure of many marriages. I repeat it again that marriage requires maturity and immaturity is the reason or the root cause why many, very many, many marriages are failing or had failed. So if you can grasp this foundational truth, this powerful truth, and you can note it, then I want to tell you, you will not compromise your maturity before you venture into issue of marriage. Some believe that age or physical look is maturity. And when you look at some people and you look at their stature, you look at, you no, know, at their age, you say, oh, wow, this is a mature man, a mature lady. Much as this may appear as one, but the real maturity for marriage surpasses mere age or mere physical look. So if we are talking about maturity for marriage, it is much more than just age or the way you look physically. So maturity means more than desire to get married. That you have desire to get married, you are you not know, testy, you are longing, you are looking for marriage because you look at your age. Wow, I am 27. Wow, I am 33. I am due for marriage. That does not, that is not enough as a maturity for marriage. Or more than the ability to conceive children. Now I can conceive you no know, uh, children and therefore. I am ready for marriage. It is far more than that. Or for a man, more than the ability to earn enough money to get married. I have enough money. I have good accommodation. Now, I can get a wife in. It is far more than you have enough money or resources to get married. So, a man of God once said, it is possible for a grown man, a grown man, to be an immature as a 13 years old boy. A grown up man can reason, think, act like a 13 years year old no boy. And also it is possible for a beautiful woman you know, to be an emotional uh, child. To be an emotional child who is so emotional, very touchy. You no, know, everything that happened around him, around her, affects her and she's emotionally break down like a child at all time so we i we are saying that maturity is very important very important and studies have shown that a larger percentage of couples with maturity before they get married enjoy flourishing marriages yeah because they were mature before they get into um the business of marriage and that helped them to have flourishing, healthy, strong, powerful marriages, which dramatically reduce the chances of uh, complicated problems because they are matured to handle a lot of things and that reduces, reduced the chance of a complicated problem and invariably that also reduced the chance of a divorce in such marriages. So when we are talking about this maturity, what does it really mean? The word maturity simply means full develop, development in age. Full development in age. But in the context of marriage, 
it is beyond being developed in age. So maturity is a stage at which one is mentally ripe to make heady, proper, effective decisions to enter into marriage and possesses all it takes to remain heady married. Now, when you look at this definition, you will see a lot of things. No, this man or this woman is mentally ripe to make a heavy, a proper, and effective decision to enter into marriage, and not only to enter into that marriage, also to be sustained in marriage. He possess all it takes to be sustained in heady marriage, that is, to remain heavily married. So, if you look at that, you see that the EU of maturity is all-encompassing. It is something that develops you to be able to take all the shocks and ab shocks absorbers that are in marriage. You are able to absorb everything and able to remain stable, stabilized, and uh, also maintain the marriage even to the very end. So it takes a lot when we talk about maturity in marriage. According to Wikipedia, maturity is the ability to respond to the environment, being aware of the correct time and location to behave, and knowing when to act according to the circumstances and the culture of the society one lives in. This is very powerful. I want to analyze that no definition. Now, it's talking about maturity as ability to respond to the environment. And you know, environment change changes, okay, in life. No, environment changes. Even in marriage, the marital environment is a dynamic one. It keeps changing, okay? By the time the two comes together, and by the time they begin to live together, now children begin to come in, and children are so really with them, very soon, the children begin to go to school. So many things begin to change rapidly, one after the other. So ability to keep responding to the environmental you know, changes that are in marriage and not losing the focus of marriage and maintaining the serenity, the harmony, the stability and the peace of that marriage continually. That is the maturity we are talking about. It must be developed to a good you know, level before a man begins to venture you know, into marriage. Because when you enter into marriage, immature, you will suffer a lot of wounds. Okay? In that definition, we are able to see that being aware of the correct time and location to behave, correct time and location to behave, correct time to speak, Correct time to act. Correct time when you are offended to ask from your spouse. So it, 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 it is much. So ability to understand the correct time and the location to behave. Okay. Even when you are offended outside, you not know, by your partner. Is that the place for you to react? Ability to understand the location to behave. And knowing when to act. Okay. You may be right, but when you act wrongly, it will es escalate and you eventually become the guilty one. So knowing when to act according to the circumstances and the culture of the society one lives in. So when you look at this definition of maturity, you will discover that the word maturity is a dynamic virtue that is ever progressive. So you cannot end it. You keep growing. But before you enter into marriage, you must be able to get to a good level whereby you are stable to keep developing. You no, know, You must have a, a, a developed in maturity to a level beyond the level you are going to enter into marriage. So that when you get in, you are above the level of what you are going to meet in the mid-date and you keep building so as to be able to stay abreast of what the challenges of marriage may be. So I want to tell you again that maturity is a personally developed skill to 
appropriately respond to others is a skill. When it's a skill, you develop it. So it is not something that somebody just gets from heaven. You are not born with maturity. You develop it. It's a you know, personally developed skill to appropriately respond to others and to the outside world. A skill that one should learn and cannot be acquired spontaneously. You cannot just wake up one day and you get yourself matured. It's a skill you developed gradually. As you develop it, you no, know, gradually, you develop it you no, know, a bit here, a bit there. So you must be conscious of the fact that you want to develop yourself and be mature. You must be conscious of it. So many are not conscious. And they believe that one day, once they are growing in age, they will get mature. No! You develop yourself into maturity. So it's a skill that you must learn. It's a skill that you must acquire. And it cannot be spontaneously acquired or just gotten. No. This definition makes maturity a practical thing. It's a practical thing. No? And it is not theory at all. When you gross it over or you put it on that carpet and you move on in your relationship, you will meet it uh, you know, in marriage that, oh, how I wish I have developed myself to be mature and then um, not thinking that this thing is a matter of theory and then you will suffer it. So there is a need to consciously uh, develop this EU of maturity before anyone enter or venture into marriage. So when we are talking about maturity, maturity has to be consciously learned and practiced to get to the desired level of understanding. So in the course of learning and practicing maturity, you come to a level of understanding and that understanding will help you. Now, you will be able to understand you know, where you really you know, belong. You will understand yourself. You will have ability to really know yourself and to really understand yourself. Many don't know themselves. They don't know what they are up to. So you will really know yourself. You will know and understand yourself. And also you will be able to understand what you need. What you really want in a partner. You will understand it. What do you really want in a partner? Others are getting you no know, a partner. Others are getting married. What do you really want in a partner? Okay? You will really understand. By the time you are able to understand this, it will help your relationship. It will guide you in your relationship. It will even guide you in your choice of who to live the rest of your life with. Okay, you will not only understand you know, what you really want in a partner, you will also understand what you have to offer to a partner. Because you have now understood yourself, you know, you now know yourself, okay, and you know what you want in a partner, and then you get yourself to the level whereby you now know what you can offer a partner by the time you are able to get one, or if you have one. You know now what you can offer to that person so that your life will be sweet together. So that is what maturity will help you to be able to acquire. So in marriage, therefore, maturity is the ability to live up to the responsibility, responsibilities of a love relationship, ability to live up to the responsibilities of rough relationship and also to be dependable in the relationship. Maturity. Ability to live up to all the responsibilities of a relationship and to be dependable in that relationship. Many cannot live up to all the responsibilities of a relationship and they want to enter into marriage. You think marriage is going to cover it up. No, marriage can't help you. Okay, it is you no know, garbage in, garbage out. It is what you put in that you get out. So if you put in maturity into marriage, you will get a matured relationship. So it will be complicated. So you must possess, when we are talking about maturity in marriage, is ability to live up to the responsibilities of a love relationship and also to be dependable in that relationship. 
What are we talking about? That is to say, living for agreed purpose. You live for the agreed purpose. You are no longer your own. You are no longer individual. Your thinking, your reasoning, okay, every other thing. So you live for agreed purpose. Okay? Keeping your words. You are able to keep your words. It may be costly. No, it it may it may go beyond your 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 immediate you no know, ability, but you ensure you keep your words, making good decisions and following through. Okay, making good decisions and following through, and also truly committing to a relationship for life. You are committed to that relationship. You don't even think in any way, even though you are not yet no, uh, 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 you are not yet uh, uh, married. But yet, once you say yes, I want this relationship. You put in everything it takes. You are committed to that relationship, and you believe the relationship is for life, even though you are not yet joined together. And you begin to walk towards that. It is maturity that makes a relationship to begin and continue despite all that happens along the way and get to the altar and continue from there and continue till death do one's part. It is what? Maturity. So, no, continue in that relationship for life with a strong determination to give up intimate relationship to all other persons especially of the opposite sex so you make up your mind it is maturity okay that can get someone doing that so john uh, mckinton says maturity begins to grow when you can sense your concern for others or others outweigh your concern for yourself that shows that you are mature you think more of others, the benefit of others, the comfort of others, how you can bless others, how you can affect others positively. And you are not just thinking, my own, my own, my own. It shows that your thinking is a mark of maturity. So you must come to that understanding that maturity is achieved when the person postpones immediate pleasure for long-term values. When you are able to postpone immediate player for long-term values. Why is it that many people get engaged or get connected? And the next thing is that they engage in sex. Okay, they want the player now. But a mature individual will postpone it until when it is right. They will postpone it. So that's maturity. Why they engage in sex before marriage is immaturity. Okay, so with proper understanding of what maturity means, a wise Christian single can save himself or herself, no, and save also his future partner or her future partner a lot of pains if he must work diligently on becoming a matured person before eventually venturing into a love relationship or issue of marriage. So, for a man, therefore, for instance, this man must become mature, and when we are talking about that, it may include being able to take care of his household. A man must grow into maturity and be able to take care of his household. That is, he must be able to cook. He must not be waiting for one man, one woman to come. And before, you no, know, that woman will begin to cook. So all along in his life is just depending on restaurants and all the life. And that is not maturing. He should be able to cook. He should be able to clean his own home by himself. He should be able to wash his clothes. And uh, when he's able to do this and many other things, he's developing himself. He's maturing, not waiting. And I want to tell you, Marriage, the purpose of marriage is not to get a sheep housemaid. No, whereby the man just turned the wife to a housemaid. No, that's not the purpose of marriage. And for a woman, it may mean that being able to attain emotional balance, you don't need to wait until a man makes you emotionally balanced. You must be able to get balance. Anything that happens around you, 
you are able to absorb it. You are strong enough and you are balanced no matter what happens. Okay? If a man can get himself mature in that his own way and a woman can get herself mature in this her own way, I want to bet you by the time they come together, their marriage will be superb and wonderful. Note this. The less mature you are, when you enter a relationship, the more troublesome it will become. So why don't you venture into maturity? Why don't you take the, no, uh, 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 the, 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 the step and do everything that will get you mature? It is my prayer that the Almighty God will give you the grace of maturity. The Almighty God will bestow upon you the understanding you need to prepare for a meaningful marriage. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you for listening. Uh, by next episode, we shall be considering um, we shall be considering the marks of immaturity in relationship. The marks of immaturity in relationship. I want you to stay tuned and the Lord will bless you. I remain your relationship coach, pastor, engineer, Tunde Ojo. For questions and personal matters, email us at singlesmatrywisdom at gmail.com. Our stronger remain, God can connect you rightly and timely if you can give him your trust and your obedience. God bless you and God bless your life in Jesus' name.